Welcome back. It's time now to talk about uh, bodybuilding and to talk about uh, the state of bodybuilding in Pakistan. I've been joined by Mr. Pakistan, Sayed Heather Abbas, who's a professional bodybuilder. Sir, Salaam Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam. Thank you very much. You recently won uh, a gold medal a couple of weeks ago, right? In Ye Lahore? Yeah, two, you know, two weeks back. Which makes you Mr. Pakistan. No, it, uh, I wasn't Mr. Pakistan. I won the, uh, uh, the class which was... Uh, uh, the most heaviest class in in Mr. Pakistan, like 100 kg and above. So it was the uh, heaviest class. So I won the gold medal in that. So I was the national champion in heaviest class. Oh, well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. you. That's wonderful. Thank you. And you're also Thank the president of bodybuilding in Islamabad. Yes, of Islamabad. Yes. 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 It's great to have you on the show. Thank this you is going to be fun. Thank you. Thank you. It's become a trend now. I mean, before we talk about bodybuilding, we will get there, of course. But let's talk about... Uh, fitness in general, which of course includes bodybuilding, which is good for you, of course, because more and more people are being drawn toward towards it. Your thoughts? Yes. I mean, uh, yes, in, in Pakistan, the trend is, uh, is getting better uh, towards fitness, especially in Islamabad as well, uh, and in all the cities of Pakistan, that there are more and more uh, gyms are uh, opening. Um, on on uh, on city levels and in ruler levels as well, so it is getting better in Pakistan. It is uh, you know the bodybuilding is kind of a fitness um, uh, you know, uh, but in 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 gym you can achieve any kind of fitness. It's not just the gyms are not just for the bodybuilding. Obviously, mm, there course. are so many uh, different ways to to keep yourself fit. So yes, there are uh, uh, you know it's a good trend in Pakistan. It's, uh, you know more and more gyms are opening. Right. Yeah. Now, bodybuilding, how has it evolved, in your opinion? Where are we at right now? I mean, uh, we are struggling. Uh, we are not there. Uh, I mean, uh, we're not there in an international level, it, it, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, with, with their kind of techniques and, uh, you know, such equipment, which is, in, uh, you know, uh, available in international gyms. But we are getting closer to that. There are few... Uh, well-known bodybuilders from Pakistan uh, who have gone to international levels and they have achieved their names. So we are not there yet, but uh, uh, I hope in coming times, in coming years, uh, we will be there. What do we need to do to be there? What needs to be done in your opinion? I mean, uh, th there should be more uh, awareness programs. Uh, there should be uh, gems in, I think, in every kind of school in, in cities at least, mm -hmm. uh, then in college levels and university levels um, uh, to start with. And then obviously the government, obviously they need to, to, you know, to pay more attention and wherever the finance is needed, uh, uh, you know, because it's not, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, a cheap game. It is, very, it is a very expensive game, the mm -hmm. bodybuilding itself. Uh, not just uh, you know equipment wise but especially food wise your nutrition is very very expensive and then your professional trainers because you can't just get trained on your own you have to hire uh, you know a, an expert trainer yeah. uh, for whatever level you want to uh, you know to go so uh, more finances are needed so if the government pay more attention towards the finances and uh, they should uh, you know, uh, go to the grassroots grassroot level, obviously, which, which are the schools and the colleges and the universities. So I think it will groom more. I mean, you mentioned a very important point there that, you know, it's not weightlifting is not just about uh, picking up dumbbells and barbells and lifting. There's a lot more to it. There are a number of nuances that, you know, one needs to understand before getting into this sport. But one advantage I think we do have now, sir, is that, you know, I mean, with the internet and so much information at our fingertips. You know, that's a start. I mean, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, we didn't have that. So I'm sure you, I mean, I, I understand you grew up in Pakistan, I'm sure. Yeah. So you, now I'm sure that, you, you know, you can go on YouTube or read up online certain techniques that international bodybuilders have used, uh, what they eat, how their diets, in order to be successful. I'm sure that really helps. Yeah, it does, it does. Uh, well. Uh, to start with, it's just not with Pakistan that we are grooming. It is in international bodybuilding as well, like in, in America, uh, where they used to be 30, 30 years back. 
uh, it is a huge difference now. The bodybuilding um, and the fitness levels and the techniques, uh, they're changing day by day, years on. Um, so uh, as they're improving, we're improving as well. But still, obviously, they started the, this around uh, in 1950s professionally uh, when the very first Mr. Olympia happened. Um, so, I mean, we are uh, going there, but obviously it'll take time. Right. It will take time. Let's talk about how you train. This should be very interesting. Now, as you said, you won uh, a competition a couple of weeks ago. Tell us about the kind of work that you put in. How much do you have to train? Uh, right. It is not just with me. It is with every professional bodybuilder yeah. in Pakistan and internationally. Uh, uh, they obviously they decide uh, the the time they have. Like if somebody has around six months or one year time, mm -hmm. then they divide their you know uh, their weeks or months uh, into different programs. First, initially they have to gain weight. They they eat plenty of protein, uh, uh, carbs, fat, everything, almost everything. So when you say gain gain weight at yeah. that stage, what exactly do you mean by that? I mean, what what do they have to eat? Do they have to eat lots of protein, or can they eat whatever, even like junk? No, just not, to gain weight. Not really junk. I mean, you know, the best way of gaining weight is the lean, uh, you know, mass. Right. And that only comes if you have more and more protein and neat carbs. You know, not too much fatty things, not too much junk. So it will give you more uh, decent weight, uh, which is easy. Uh, at the end of the, uh, you know, as closer to your uh, competition, it is easy to take off from your body. Otherwise, you know, having too much junk in, in, in your body, mm -hmm. the, that fat takes ages. Yeah. You know, so there's a difference yeah, then between yeah. good fat and exactly, bad fat. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So once the time and the duration has, you know, decided, then, then, then obviously you gain weight, like, and then you have to drop. Uh, right at the end of uh, of uh, closer to your competition, like two months or three months time, um, the 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 workout routine on daily basis that stays the same, almost same, twice a twice a day. Uh, you do a bit of carbs. Uh, I mean carbs. I'm saying uh, sorry. Um, cardio. Uh, cardio. Bit of cardio, but plenty of weight training. You know, with dumbbells and you know, uh, barbells. Uh, uh, yeah, everything, everything in the gym. So, and then. Uh, two to three hours in the morning, probably two, three hours in the evening. Um, I was like doing, uh, you know, for like twice a day. And sometimes, you know, right at the end, I had to, you know, uh, lay underneath the, 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 the sunlight for like two hours, you know, uh, during the daytime. So that is very pretty much. Why do you have to lay under the sunlight? Yeah, it is like sunbathing is for, you know, trimming you as much as possible, then your skin gets brown and, you know, oh, yeah, the fat the comes off. Oh, yeah, for the competition, Yeah, your skin gets that shine, which is, you know, needed at this stage, you know, during this stage. So, yeah, it is very difficult, but obviously almost every, bo every bodybuilder in Pakistan and international, they go through the same routine. In your opinion, I mean, for you especially, what's the most difficult muscle to work on? Which days do you not like? Is it chest, back, legs, shoulders? Right. Well, it really depends on, on different people. Like, uh, I think the legs probably and the shoulders are probably the most difficult ones. I had a feeling you were going to say that. Yeah, but, but for many people, when you see their muscles, especially thigh muscles, they're, they're very good, they're very mature. And the reason is going to be because they like doing you know their leg exercises so you have to take interest in every muscle you do so to, to get you know to, to that level and to improve in that muscle if you're not going to like a muscle that it is tough that the improvement is not going to be like you know yeah. the way you want I mean not for bodybuilding yes. of course because I mean it's a it's a sport and for you it's completely yeah. different but for normal people who like just who just like weightlifting I notice that they focus more on their upper body and not their legs but you've just said like you know not just for uh, professional bodybuilders but for people who want to be fit in general it's so important to, to focus on your lower body it is indeed uh, uh, I tell you what there, there is a misconception like like internationally if you see the bodybuilders and then there is another category of bodybuilding which is fitness models you know mr physique category fitness model i know that they spend almost same years they spend almost same time in the gym mm -hmm. they they eat less but they eat almost same number of meals throughout the day so it is not 
if somebody says that they, they want to just improve, uh, you know, uh, like uh, they want to achieve that fitness level and they don't want to, they don't want to be a bodybuilder, they still need to work out, they still need to focus on every muscle mm -hmm. to be fit, yeah. you know. So uh, it is better, obviously, to, uh, to be fit in almost all part of you, uh, parts of your body. It is very, very important. As a professional bodybuilder, sir, how many muscles do you work on in a day? Well, it really depends. At least a muscle a day. But if you're working twice a day, then there are going to be at least two muscles a day. Two so muscles a day? At least two muscles a day, yes. That's very difficult, <laughs> at least for someone like yeah. me. Uh, and to do it, and you said, look, it, once in the morning and once in the evening, yeah. right? Two to three hours. So the, yeah. that's, a lo that's a lot of time. I mean, there must, are there ever moments where you just feel demotivated and you feel you don't feel like going to the gym? I'm sure you've had those moments. So how do you power through it? How do you get through it? Yeah, there are certain days when your energy level is down. Like uh, if you go through a very tough day or, or a tough exercise routine, the next day uh, sometimes you, you, you have temperature, you know, you're not feeling like, you know, going out, you know, for, for working out. But when, once you keep that, you know, that moment off stage that you want to win it and your trainer is there and there are some good people. Because in my team, I had my trainer, uh, Ustad Hussain, who was, uh, uh, who is from uh, Gujranwala. So I especially, uh, you know, invited him to Islamabad uh, because uh, uh, he is one of the, those persons who had made few Mr. Pakistans, so he mm -hmm. knew exactly what routine, you know, is needed to become Mr. Pakistan uh, or for a, for a better body. So I had him in my team um, um, and I had few more people, you know, from um, um, say from uh, uh, from Smarts and there, there, are other, there are other names as well. So I had around five, six people when I was working out, you know, they were looking after me, motivating, you know, motivating me, you know, putting my dumbbells back into the racks and bringing dumb dumbbells for me for next sets. So it is not easy, but when you have people like my father, uh, he used to go out to market every day for my for my fish, for my chicken, mm. for my you know for for eggs, for everything I I needed throughout the day. He used to go out and bring fresh for me. Mm. So. How, did, how long did it take you to look like that? That's incredible. Yeah, it, it was around, like, like I said, yes, uh, uh, last year I knew that I had to participate into this competition. So it took me a year for this, uh, uh, for, for this contest. But last six months, like I was working out in the morning, in the evening. So it was uh, pretty tough. But like I said, I had a very good t team. You know, my family was there cooking meals for me. You know, my father was there you know so backing me up so like uh, i said my trainer my friends my business partners like for like uh, four months last four months i couldn't go to my, for my business we do uh, construction work so we couldn't mm. i couldn't go to the office yeah. so they are looking after so it is not an easy thing and l let me tell you that that as i said it is very expensive uh, game so there are more boys from very small cities of Pakistan and even in rich cities, in bigger cities of Pakistan, there are poor boys, there are poor people uh, who are more interested into sports. But when we talk about bodybuilding as a sport, it is very expensive to have around mm -hmm. six, seven, eight meals when you're going to have two, three chickens a day or like two, two to three kgs of beef every day. Right. Like, Let's talk about yeah. uh, your, your, your nutrition now. We have to talk yeah. about that yeah. before we yeah. end the show. Uh, your diet. When, again, when you're preparing uh, for a competition uh, like this, uh, how, how do you go about your meals? What do you eat? Um, how do you divide your meals, I should say? Yes, uh, the, there is a meal, like if, like I said, I was working out in the morning. So I had a meal, uh, I used to have a meal before my workout, pre-workout, like 12 eggs and um, a bit of carbs. 12, you know, did you say 12 eggs? 12 eggs, yes, um, you know. Um, then a potato or a sweet potato, something like that, uh, uh, and before exercise, pre-workout. And then after my workout, I used to have like 12 eggs again, you know, with brown bread and, uh, and uh, uh, oatmeal. W what kind of eggs? Boiled eggs. Boiled eggs. Okay. Boiled eggs, yeah, mm -hmm. without yolk. Yeah. Because yolk is not, uh, you know, too much. Uh, not very good. Yeah. Not very good because of the cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So, and then throughout the day, that was the same routine before and after 
my exercise in the evening, but throughout the day I had to have around two to three kgs of beef when I was gaining, mm -hmm. um, around kg to kg and a half of potatoes, you know, and um, half kg around uh, uh, the sweet potato, then, then two or three plates of rice, white rice. Not brown rice? Because I feel a lot of people move towards brown Br rice, brown. they think yeah. it's healthier, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. It is a lot healthier. Um, but we, I, I had it right at the end, like last in last two months, where I was very much conscious about my uh, carbs. Then I had brown rice, like brown bread. Yeah. You know, and but you before, need carbs for, for energy, otherwise, yeah, you, know, I mean, you, you yeah, cannot you work can't out. work out you for cannot, six hours a day. Yeah, you cannot work out. You cannot work out. Uh, and then uh, eight meals throughout the day, from starting from six a.m. till right uh, twelve p.m. when finishing going to bed. Um, and then throughout the day, you have to have, uh, you, you know, you have to be uh, looking after your minerals and your vitamins as well, like fish oil, like multivitamin, something like that. You you need to be careful about your vitamin D because there is plenty of you know mm. bones, you know, and they're getting involved into the exercise. So yeah, it was a tough routine having around eight meals a day. You know, it is tough and difficult to eat um, when you're having almost same meat, you know, again and again, it's coming out. You get to tired you. of it, you, yeah. You get tired, yeah, around after two to three hours time, a plate, you know, half kg of beef, you have to have it. How is the beef cooked? I know I'm asking lots yeah. of questions here, but I'm, I'm fascinated actually. How's the beef cooked? Uh, mostly boiled. Boiled? Yeah. Nothing, no masala, nothing? No, nothing at all. Black pepper, most of it. You know, a bit of lemon, <laughs> I mean, if you, you want to, to put change something the in taste, there, right? yeah. <laughs> nothing else. No spices whatsoever, uh, no salt as well, uh, no sugar. For like six months, I didn't have chapati, roti, naan, paratha, anything for like six months. That must have killed you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it did. Uh, it, was di it, it was difficult, but right at the end when you win and, you know, you go to a contest and, you know, you get something better, then you're relief like, you know, that's what you wanted yeah, to do absolutely. and you achieved. You've hit the yeah. nail on the yeah, head there. Exactly. It was fascinating uh, talking to you, uh, Heather Abbas. I think you mentioned some very important points yeah. there. You know, the, the, the nuances of bodybuilding, what it entails, and even just the fact that, you know, young people yeah. who come from, you know, not very rich backgrounds, yeah. poor backgrounds, it's difficult for them, you know, being able to afford yeah. 12 meals a day. I mean, I didn't even, th I didn't think of it that way, but yeah. you put it into perspective. This was a fascinating conversation. And I hope we can have you on again. It was a pleasure. Thank you very Best much. Best of luck. Same here. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's all we have time for. Keep watching Sports Extra on PTV World. See you next time.